What's up everybody? I'm wearing my Firefox t-shirt today because we're talking to Manuel Martin. He's the senior software engineer at Mozilla Hubs and he has made an awesome space on Mozilla Hubs called Locus Among Us. And we talked to him about his inspiration going from concept to completion, his whole production pipeline, what inspired him, what motivated him to do it. Um, we also talked to him about the use of open source software and his ideas on whether it's a good idea to generalize or specialize in these different creative fields. And it was a really great time. We actually had a lot of the Mozilla Hubs team there, which are like royalty. And uh, it, was, it was a really awesome experience. So check it out. Let's get started. Um, this conversation, as with all the others in the series, is brought to you by Utopia VR. They are a metaverse company that is powered by Mozilla Hubs, and they are renting out spaces that you can have your own virtual space on their platform. And it's really powerful. It's a, it's a custom branch, and they've got a lot of features and stuff that Mozilla Hubs, the main branch of Mozilla Hubs, doesn't quite have. So really cool company. Uh, Mozilla is a really cool company, and this was a really awesome conversation. So check it out. So I'm really curious to hear about your production style and like how you managed to complete a project this ambitious in such a short period of time, because I know that you said you did it over the holiday break. And so how many, how many weeks did it take you to go from concept to completion? Um, well, my production process is not really uh, short. I mean, I, it was just at some time and well, everything is started like it was in a in a coffee break uh, one day with a couple of people of the team and and I just saw in a sketch but this uh, this kid uh, which is uh, is here mm. um, so I saw that and I thought oh, well probably you can use that kid to build something because part uh, like a bunch of the time you spend uh, with environments is creating assets and, and unless you take them from somewhere and you like keep bash one thing, uh, but otherwise you have to build every single thing. It takes like ages. So, so I was this time for for holidays. I said like, oh, if I don't have to spend much time modeling uh, uh, things and props, then I can spend some more time like making sure that the environment looks nice and placing things and um, and like you know paying attention to to detail versus spending a lot of time just creating. A bunch of assets um so um, yeah I, I guess that was my my intent like not spend that much time this time uh on on props creation and assets just focus on on the, uh, the environment creation nice. so that saved a lot of time fantastic and and yeah. so was that the source of your inspiration was that that kit like that uh, kit on sketchfab you just found it and you're like i could build a whole world out of this yeah, I saw that, and and I want to do something uh, with nature because um, all the things that I've done lately were more like cyberpunk or or office or stuff like that, and more closed spaces. And I and I was I want to try some some open space, um, some yeah somewhere peaceful that you can uh, meet with people and it feels like quiet and calm, and you can chat without much much noise, but you know like something that feels feels nice. And you want to spend time in that. On that place is because it's comfortable and, and soothing. Yeah. So I guess that was the that was the aim, and yeah. And then I just started like um, basically I created the the terrain that was the first thing, and then I started placing some uh, trees, some some rocks, um, you know, like and just like placing things in what was the feeling, and. And this was during Christmas, and I was visiting my family, and my dad was there, and I was showing him the progress. And at some point, he said, like, oh, "This looks pretty much like uh, this concept from, from I think it's a Greeks and Romans, is Locus Amenus, which is this uh, idyllic place that uh, in the nature, which usually has like a river, or some water stream, and it's really peaceful, and like you can relax." Um, so apparently that. My dad likes Greek and Roman literature a lot, so he knows about those things. And he told me, "Hey, you probably should take a look at that." And um, I was looking to, yeah, to pictures on basically I, I Google it because I didn't know that that existed or what it was. And and then I was taking a look at pictures, and um, yeah, and I thought like maybe 
like a place that that wasn't too big because if you if you don't put limits then it's really hard because you you have to model a lot of stuff and and you can't see too much and it's and it's hard in that case so uh, the rocks are the limits and then I only needed to worry about what's within the limits which is basically like placing trees and and this middle like meeting point um, and then paying attention to what I said like detail which is it's kind of really important always um yeah i never paid that much attention and this time i want to uh, to do something that that you could look around and see oh look at that 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 thing makes sense and that that like a real life does the small details nice so that, that it was actually your dad looking at your work in yeah. progress that kind of guided you to this point mm, that's awesome yeah yeah, yeah it was yeah it was kind of him you know, probably like yeah i should do the fog like you know try to to aim for this thing but yeah it makes sense yeah totally so so did you have deadlines or did you did you have any type of project management or were you just chipping away at things as you saw them or or as you had an idea to implement something was there any type of scheduling or was it like just entirely just doodling until done um yeah, I wanted to finish it during the couple of weeks that I was uh, with my family because I didn't have much, much to do other than stay home and the alternative was, just, I guess, watching TV or playing games or something. So, yeah, those two weeks were like, I have all the time in the world. So it's like, a, well, it's something that you can accomplish in two weeks. Um, um, and generally, I fail miserably with the scheduling. So, it, again, I'm going to do this in two weeks and then it doesn't work. But this time it just pan out, and yeah, I think it's, when I'm two weeks were probably like designing the space, and then I guess there was like probably another like a few days where like fine tuning and tweaking, uploading, fixing things, going back and forth between Blender and and Habs. So I guess they spent like probably two solid weeks in in Habs and I mean in, in Blender, and then probably a week uh, tweaking things. Uh, in, in halves and back and forth between halves and blender. So are you you bypass spoke then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's another thing that that they want to try. The, the the other goal for working on this environment was using the blender uh, workflow because I uh, before that I hadn't really used it that much and um, then I wanted to look deeper into it, see uh, things that we might you know. Uh, uh, we might want to do it a different way, or what? What things artists may will be, will be interesting from from an artist's perspective for uh, to be able to work from from Blender and directly publish in, into Hub. So, so I want to to get a bit like dive deeper into that workflow to have a better sense of what we need to to work on on that side. Did you? Did uh, you... And also, well, Tom... go ahead. Yeah, sorry. No, I mean, just like uh, Dom is here, and and Dom. Um, work in, in the past and he's he's worked on the blender workflow a lot and and he was uh, he worked on this like um uh live reload uh, service which uh, basically you open um the house room uh which is a specific branch uh it's not it's not in production and then you have to set up this service locally and then uh, whenever you over overwrite the the um, uh, dlb file um uh, you know that service notifies the uh, house and then that reloads the 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 scene with that. So that speeds up the um, the workflow quite a lot. And I was interested in looking deeper in. Super. That's awesome. Yeah, I I I've talked to Dom about setting up that system before, but it seems a little out of my wheelhouse. Um, because it's it's got the npm the thing. Mm. Yeah. It, it, it's more difficult for us, uh, non technical artists. Are you, you aware to have like uh, live? Like you can just do it. Anybody can do it. I wasn't sure if that um, was clear. Yeah, I sorry to interject. No, I, no, no. Please, no. I have no idea. I have no idea how. Well, there's oh. the, there's the the just the drag and drop thing now. It's not quite the yeah, same. The drag and drop is perfect. Yeah, it's not quite the same oh, like, as yeah, the yeah. live reload, but like you can drag and drop uh, with a query parameter now. Uh, I forget what the query parameter is, but debug um, local scene. Yeah, debug yeah. local scene. If you add that uh, to your scene, then you can just drag a GLB file into Hubs, and it'll use that GLB file as the scene, uh, only for you locally. Uh, you know, it won't work with other people in the room and stuff. 
but that's a quick way to iterate. Uh, yeah, that that has been super useful. I have definitely been using that on my on my latest uh, project. Um, so that's fantastic, uh, and it's super duper fast. It's not quite as fast as I think um, as the the system that you and Manuel have rocking, but true, you know true. it's it's good enough for me for sure. Yeah, I mean the the only thing that that system cuts out is just the manual step of having to drag the file, and it'll just you know do that yeah. basically for you. But um, in both cases, it doesn't have to upload the file to our servers or anything like that, so it's it's very fast. Nice, yeah. Um, Okay. That's yeah, no, that that's super that's super awesome. It's bypassing spoke with that system. Um, I I absolutely love it. There's a lot of details in here, like, you know, there's the the particle system over the fountain and there's the particle system at the base of the waterfall. There's UV scroll, some of the trees are animated, like it just and the birds flying around in the corners, like uh, in the in the top, like it just feels like there's so many tiny little intricate details. And I'm wondering, like, what was your process to implement these? Like, how did you, how did you come up with these, the, the inspiration to move the trees? And did you rig the tree yourself? Like, how did you decide what you wanted to bring into the scene and what you wanted to work on? Um, I guess it was probably just um, looking at the scene for a long, long time. <laughs> it's like, um, I was looking at the scene and, you know, as you look at different parts, you say, like, Oh, what, how or why does that area doesn't really feel lively or um, and yeah, sometimes it's just because it's still and, and nature is not still and these things happening everywhere the whole time. And if you are outside in the forest, then then you can hear birds and you can like hear water flowing. Um, there are mosquitoes. There are um, the things are animated. So so yeah, that that makes sense that it's it's like that in a in a virtual environment because you want to feel like it's, it's alive it's not a static thing uh, if it's if, if it's too static it feels like it's dead and doesn't yeah it doesn't transmit that uh, that yeah well at least at least for me uh, that's something that you look around and, and somehow makes sense and it clicks you know oh, this no, things are moving uh, uh, like the plants uh, here in the middle, it's swinging from side to side, which is how it's, it should work. And or even sometimes exaggerating things also works pretty well. Maybe in nature, that's it's not like that. But if you exaggerate it a little bit, then um, then it also it also works pretty well. Um, so yeah, it's ba basically the process was like looking at it like every day for a few hours and thinking, and, and sometimes just just came up just came up like oh, I'm gonna add this, see how it works. Oh, yeah, it works well. Um, so that's one thing at a time. It wasn't really like planning. Uh, I'm gonna add foam, and then I'm gonna add particles here, and then I move over here. It was just like looking at trying to add things to um, to make it more more lively. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it does everywhere you look. There's something moving and something living, and it definitely makes the space feel alive and very comfortable to be in. So, yeah, freaking killer work. It's just when you stack these like technical things on top of each other, like all the use of all these different animations and, and UV scrolls and all that stuff, it just, you know, it, it just really kind of shows off how, how <laughs> thorough your, your hubs knowledge is. So it's really awesome. Yeah. It's a cool thing. Although this is, this is um, like the texture wise doesn't have much. It's, it's basically it's a color palette. So, uh, so it's like a few colors and gradients and everything is mapped there uh, because basically, uh, uh, well, it, it was done that way. I mean, the, the kit that I used was already created that way, but in the past I always do that because it's, it's just faster, <laughs> like in lazy. And, and as I said, if, if you want to focus on every single aspect, like creating the assets and the texture, it's a long, long process and takes a long time. So it's just a way of being just lazy and, and you know, like, finishing these things a bit faster than if you have to do that because uh, usually you have to bake a lot of stuff or you have to go to different tools um you will map everything specifically so the textures don't stretch and and you optimize the texture space and you use maybe substance and then that's it's a, it's a long process so using the color palette and then um, adding all that uh, layer of texture information using light map or an occlusion map 
I think it works pretty well. Um, well, for depending what you aim aiming for, for I mean for this type of of environment, if you're looking for something realistic, obviously that's not going to work. But that wasn't my uh, that wasn't the purpose of this scene. So. So, so you did use Atlas textures, or is that just what the default came with um, uh, on that on the kit use? Because not everything is from the kit. Like these these hedge stones, uh, arches yeah. aren't from the kit, right? Like, so there's a lot of stuff that you built yourself in here. Yeah, there are a few things that I built. Um, most of the things are, but uh, yeah, there's some things that that obviously the kit doesn't have everything. So you have to create some, for example, this uh, this pond in the middle, um, the well, all the all the thing in the middle, the columns and the all that I made it, and then um, the mountains in the back, the the clouds, um, uh, the um, well, the birds are I took them from from Jeep, um, the sun and but but there are really simple things. It's like the mountains is just like a like a like planes, uh, it's like a few polygons. It's, it's not not much, um, and the clouds is also very simple. It's like billboard clouds, I think. Um, so yeah, most of the ninety percent is, is a kit, and then a few things that I added because because you I needed it. Did you have any optimization issues with any of the stuff either from the kit that you needed to to make more optimized or? Because there are, there are gifts and there's so many anim loops in here, like the sun, the clouds, and the UV scrolling. Mm -hmm. And there's like like I don't know, like at least four particle systems. So was this something that because it loads so fast and it seems really well optimized while not compromising on visual fidelity at all. So like, did you did you struggle with that, or do you just continue to keep everything as light as possible and it never really added up to a problem? Mm, yeah, I mean, never really reached the point where it was uh, pretty pretty bad. It's not really optimized. I think it could be much more optimized. Uh, for example, I haven't like merged match geometry, uh, which in in this part we do automatically. But if you export from Blender, uh, it's not automatic. Or mm. texture compression, I have. Uh, it's not really doing any texture compression right now. Uh, but in the the textures are not not that big. I can share the blend file because I have the. Uh, yeah, you did share the blend file in the Discord, which is freaking awesome. And I also wanted to like you know th these probably softball questions for somebody that you know is working where you work and doing what you do for as long as you've done. But like, oh wow, that's super cool. So this is the the blend file, mm -hmm. just in case. Um, so I made a few, I organized the, the assets a little bit. So there are a few things that are not light map, um, because they don't need to, like, for example, the clouds, the stars, uh, the water doesn't need them light mapping, um, all the flowers, the flowers don't really need to be light map because you want them to, to be bright and shiny, not, not to be dimmed by, by light. So it doesn't really matter that they are light mapped also. So all those things are, are not light map. Um, for example, the mountains are also not not light map. Uh, these mountains here, uh, because it doesn't mm -hmm. make sense. It's just background and it's stuff with, with just the color. Um, and the mountains uh, and the part is background. So all that doesn't need to be light map, of course. It's a, it goes in a different folder. Then there's a lot of assets that that are light map. You can see it here, um, like like the the ground. Um, but most of the assets, uh, like the trees and and most of the mm -hmm. things that, that we see there. Um, well, this is just the different armatures and animation that I created for the for the trees mostly. And then there's another folder with just half stuff. Um, so this is like the background zone, uh, the birds, uh, particles, nav mesh, some particles, spam points, um, water for particles, and, and waterfall zones. Um, so yeah, that's basically the the structure of the. So you have collection, point. which is th that top collection is is hub stuff, environment two, which is all the geometry and materials, and prep. What's the prep collection? Uh, prep collection, I think it's uh, yeah, yeah. I think uh, originally, well, all this. Um, so I needed to originally the the class were. 
uh, with um, the texture. So this is just like the the camera and and some metaverse that I used to to make the the clouds. So just mm -hmm. like render the cloud and, and then I use that texture uh, in a, on a plane just to get the all the clouds in the environment. But I, I ended up not using it, so this is just like uh, it's not being used. And then this is the original um, collection of that I, the kit that I used. Mm -hmm. So that's basically, and then the yeah, then materials. So, are you uh, uh, are you screen sharing right now? Because I only have an image. Um, I am screen sharing. Yeah. Uh, I I just we just have the the Blender photo, like it's an Im a still image. Oh, I, oh, I thought it was. Oh, okay. I thought it was screen sharing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it's just a snapshot okay. of the screen. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. Okay. There we go. Oh, yeah. Well, I I could yeah. see in the outliner or in the in the hierarchy, yeah. like you yeah, know yeah. what was there, but yeah, okay, go ahead. Um, well, yeah, that's the uh, yeah, basically the outline. I said like stars, clouds, and everything. So, yeah. Mm. Um, and yeah, the materials are also um pretty simple. So yeah. So. Yeah, basically. Do you know how many megabytes the scene ended up being? The GLB file? I think it was around 30, 32, nice. 34, something like that. I remember correctly. Um, so yeah, this is this is the main material. So all the um, all the light map um, objects uses use this this material, uh, Mat two. Um, so this is uses a, a number of occlusion map, uh, a light map. And then just a regular um, principal shader with the the base texture, which is the texture that uses came with the kit. And then and this material is just full roughness; it doesn't really have anything like specularity or anything. Um, so yeah, and then I use the the custom the hubs nodes for uh, the light map and the and the GLTF setting for, for the occlusion map. The occlusion map doesn't really add that much, to be honest. Um, just some, you know, like, yeah, you, you can you can see it a little bit, but it's not super essential. It could be removed and you could, uh, you could probably not even notice it that much, but add some details. So it's kind of that, yeah, I like. Is there a reason yeah. not to just combine that with the light map? Like just multiply it down onto the same texture file and, and yeah. load yeah. in a second texture? Probably that will be the, the smartest way of doing it. Um, yeah, there's a, there's a few things that I didn't I end up not doing it because I was just like, okay, this is it. I'm not gonna Good that. enough. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It but, does. It does seem like you doodled your way to like an, a masterpiece here, like just kind of winging every step of the process. But but it's really really nice in conclusion. Like it looks mm. so good. Yeah, it's I don't have to. And uh, thirty two bit light maps. Uh, yeah, yeah. So this, uh, this is the and the yeah. And how did you organize your light map, your your light map UVs? Is, is does the ground and the rocks and the trees all have a separate one, or are they all merged onto the same one? Um. Yeah, I think I just uh, what I ended up doing, and that's why of the reasons I have these folders is like, um, what I do is just like uh, select objects from here, so. When you have in the collection, you can quickly select everything. You just click on tab, and then you can directly like uh, unwrap that. In, um, I didn't use the line map unwrapping because that really messed up the the scenes. Then when you end up having these small faces and and the and then the the line map like uh, um, yeah, they're terrible. It, like uh, yeah, blend like like um, leaks the outside and. Um, especially when you, after that, you you denoise it, then you can see all these seams um, in real time. Yep. So it, it doesn't really work that well. So I ended up like uh, doing a regular, so you see the, so this is just a regular like unpack. Uh, mm -hmm. I I think I had to, well, is it? Yeah, I think I have to unwrap um, 
add the second the first and second db map to everything and and some of them i i need to do some like do be mapping uh, to make sure they have like a but most of them i, I could just uh, and wrap with a smart and wrap and, and that worked pretty well so and that there's so the nice. atlas texture that came with the uh, sketchfab kit right yeah yeah this is the this is texture which is a pretty good gradient because you have i mean pretty good palette because you have a, a lot of colors and and yeah i didn't really need anything anything else um uh, you could use this palette for for a lot of different scenes of this style because it has like mostly like this is the, the rgb spectrum completely so um so yeah i use that also in a different ways the the kit came with um with a the gb map uh, which is mapped to mostly a mm -hmm. color you see here so all mm -hmm. this rock is mapped to, to the specific color and then i did same gradients for example the mountains uh, and just like what i did is you unwrap in in view um in view mode and pray from view from the side it's like just from the side and you unwrap pray from view and then you which is should be originally like this and then you rotate it stretch it so it, it gets the gradient that you wanna uh, you wanna have Mm -hmm. um so because that way you can you can make the side that the the sun is facing lighter than the sun that the is uh, the opposite side because that's uh, how it should be the sun should be hitting uh, on the mountains on on this side uh brighter than on this side because they are, the, the sun should be behind so yeah so that type of gradients are also kind of nice yeah it's um, beautiful yeah, did, uh, did you have fine too. art training or any type of uh, art experience, professional art experience, like with, before joining the HUDS team? Because it, it seems no, not, like not very art. No, I always liked it. So it was using, and I used Blender for a while, and I really, I really like it. So I, I was doing it, uh, yeah, like a like a hobby for quite a long time, mm. and. Yeah, so this is it. That's not. You've got a good understanding this, of. Uh, this is in... Yeah, you've got a good understanding of visual hierarchy and <laughs> color, yeah, yeah, color, really color nice. usage, and yeah, yeah. Well, so, I mean, this scene turned out to be pretty good. I mean, it's, I'm, I'm pretty surprised about <laughs> this scene. It's not that the, everything I do is looks like like this. It's just like I did, and, and I, I kind of surprised that it turned out to be to look so good. But, Oh yeah, well, two weeks going from nothing to this. I mean, I know you started with a kit, but you know, in in two weeks, just mm. I, yeah, those subtle things like gradienting and and reacting to the light. Well, it's just like it makes for a really aesthetically appealing place, um, and it does feel like there must have been some art history here. You know, you said earlier before we started that you don't have a lot of time to mess around with art. Well, why not? Why aren't you doing this all the time? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, no, I, I also like sometimes things are better as a hobby. I understand <laughs> you know, that. You, you, you can just do whatever you want and, and, and you, you don't have to, like, um, you can just try stuff and you don't have any pressure of of delivering or whatever. So it's, it's okay. Like, mm -hmm. like sometimes, whenever I have some time. And, and, and sometimes I just sit there and, and I can't do anything. I'm just blocked. And, so now I'm gonna do this, and I spend like a couple of days, and I'm like, oh, this is this is not gonna work at all. And I if I may, alone. Uh, I would just say that Manuel is one of those uh, developers that is a great engineer, and he makes incredible strides in in our work, and he makes artists, full time artists like me, uh, feel a little bit sheepish at times when he's so capable <laughs> of doing such great yes. work that's not even his his full-time job so namesies <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, yeah honestly this is, this is like probably the the best thing i've done so far so yeah. i was just going to ask uh when you do have those creative blocks like what do you do to get through them past them over them um well i mean not being your work really helps because you you just leave it there and and you you don't have any pressure anymore because you don't have to deliver it which is what usually <laughs> happens like you know you have like to deliver like environments that well jim knows that is you know you have to do it and then you have to sit there and 
in French it and um, at some point you probably hate it because it's your blog and it doesn't look like you would like it to, to look and, and you get mad and you have to deal with that. Uh, when when it's not it's just something that you do for fun, then just you leave it sit there for a while and then you don't feel any pressure. So so sometimes that's even helpful because you you just forget about it, relax, and then at some point you're like, oh, I'm gonna go back to that and, and I'm gonna try this, and and works. So yeah. So the I, absence I never did of pressure. Job, so I don't I don't know I don't really know how is how is on the other side. I mean, I have the pressure of of. Well, I guess like every other job that you do. You yeah, yeah, I get that. Yeah, and, and Jim writing in the chat, it's hard to not give up sometimes. I think you guys are basically mm. saying the same thing. Like, you know, Manuel's using the word rest and, and Jim, you're using the words give up, but it sounds like it's the same thing. When you hit that block, It just you just need time. You just need to release mm. the pressure and do something else for a while. Because, yeah, pressure yeah. very rarely creates um beautiful work sometimes it does but you know most most creative people need space and peace and relaxing in order especially to build a space mm. like this which is so calm uh, it needs to come from a creative that is in a calm place yeah yeah yes that's true and it's not the mind sometimes it doesn't you don't feel it and and you're blocked and in those cases ideally you should switch to a different task or switch to um or just rest if you can but exactly sometimes it's not that that easy but yeah i mean like being on christmas chilling really was really helpful and uh, so because it was like you know like they have like the, all the celebrations so you disconnect and then you don't have anything else to do so you are like constantly thinking oh what if i add these these birds and oh, i could add this flower that's blowing in the river or could this or could like that so just like there is in the back of your mind and keeps on coming and telling you like yeah, you should at this you should try that mm -hmm. so to yeah. switch topics just a tiny bit um i have a lot of artists that i teach that are using a variety of different software and are entering into this new uh web3 or metaverse industry from different avenues and from different angles now I'm 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 not pandering when I say Blender and Mozilla Hubs are absolutely my favorite. It's where I've you know put all, all of my eggs into this basket for sure. But I just you know for those other people that are coming in talking about using Unity, trying to do pixel streaming in Unreal Engine, you know, even using conventional software like 3ds Max or Maya or something like that, you know, why why Mozilla Hubs? You know you you. You know, you work for Mozilla. You know, you you you've dedicated a lot of your effort and your time into building this product, which is an open source product. You're using Blender, which is an open source product. Like, what? Why is open source important to you? Why is it important to you that this product wins? Um, well, I I don't really use Blender because because of of hard. So I used Blender like a long time ago. Um, so I just like because basically it was the the only like open source good uh, 3D um, software, and mm. and, I, and yeah, I mean when I started when I started using it, there wasn't really many alternatives for for free 3D software and that work on different operating systems and and yeah, so everything was like you have to like buy a license from 3D Max and they need the specific. Uh, maybe like only in Windows and stuff like that. So, so it wasn't really an alternative. And then when I started interested about like 3D, I discovered that, and and then I discovered like the, the power of of this of the, the the open source community also because um, the community back in the day they bought the 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 source from from the company, um, and they they opened it afterwards, and then. Um, it grow immensely with a lot of like uh, collaboration. So uh, it's it's a really powerful thing. And and I always think like everything that I have learned in in three D specifically because I don't have any any um, like uh, like um, um, I haven't studied anything like that. So everything that I learned uh, it's always been on the internet, written in forums, on people that share the knowledge or people that offer the scripts. So they offer. Uh, uh, they were working on the on the on the program to implement new features. So 
So yeah, that's pretty important. And um, otherwise, I, I wouldn't know anything because I I would never have access to to buy a license for 3D Max or Maya or any of this software. So probably it just I haven't I never had tried probably. So accessibility yeah, so. then that's basically it, you had access to it yeah. so that's why you invested into it yeah yes awesome. it, it wasn't like a like an open source alternative and a community i probably nowadays i wouldn't know or, or little or nothing about 3d um yeah because it wasn't my my career focus or everything i learned was just because you know, people shared and, and there was people working on this for just for fun is is that the same um reason why you felt like giving away the blender file to this scene because yeah, that's extra yeah, well, you I mean, didn't have to do that <laughs> um yeah but wouldn't why wouldn't i <laughs> like, why do i need the blend file like sitting in my my hard drive it doesn't it's not gonna go do anything for me it's right. just gone so um so if anybody can learn anything or or take anything or um, copy or whatever they want to do is um, that's what is more useful than than the files sitting in my hard drive. Absolutely, yeah. Were were there any uh, interesting technical or design challenges you faced uh, in this project, or any happy accidents that you're like, oh, that I didn't mean for it to do that, but that looks cool. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of things were just trying things and. It's like, oh, let's put this here. Let's, let's try to to change this gradient. Let's try to, um, um, yeah. Also, like the the way the I don't know much about environment design, so so blocking all these things that then you hear people talk about, like oh, block first, don't focus on the detail first, because uh, then you end up with a really complex uh, small corner of the scene, and and then the rest is, is empty, and then you have a lot of work to do and you're desperate so so blocking um from the beginning and having the sense of the space and the light and and the palette uh, all those things that in, are important and if you focus on that early then that that's going to make things much easier uh, but not many challenges um because i knew most of the workflow and working with blender and, and, and hearts and and the components that we're using and so that that was pretty much pretty straightforward um wouldn't say like there was like uh, anything very but just slowly working on it and moving towards the, the goal awesome yep i totally agree starting you know with fundamental shapes and then working your way up in detail is is uh, mm. definitely a, a good production workflow. It's like the only production workflow, or as you said, you know, you get a really yeah. detailed corner. But, uh, now that I see this script, this is one thing that I, I do like a couple of scripts because this is one thing that annoys me a lot about uh, how Blender works, that sometimes you click, um, you click on, a, on, an, on an object and then you, uh, you go to UV editing and you change because you need to um, the selected light map and you change to UV map and then that object changes the main the selected light map I mean the selected UV map and then mm -hmm. if you bake then you end up baking on the using the wrong UV map uh, it's very annoying and I don't know if there are tools to avoid that but it happens to me a lot that I go like click on an object uh, just want to take a look at the UV map uh, so I ended up like choosing that as the default one and then um, when I um, when I bake, then the, it's not all, not all of them are using the same UV map. So I just like to do like a few like like very simple scripts to to change the light map. I mean to be able to to switch all light maps uh, from all the objects at the same time and change the light map or UV map um, before baking. So I, I make sure that they all have the the right one selected. But it's not a big issue. Just like a Something was annoying. Yeah, no, that that is annoying. I I've switched over to the Nextella Light Mapper plugin, but I'm also gonna see if I can interview Pelinor next week because he has his own um add-on that he his own scripts that he uses for for light baking that uh, mm. seem to be quite similar. 
it does seem to be a, a, a hassle and blunder to be able to, to do it manually. Um, but there are a few add-ons that, that make things a little bit easier. Hmm. I mean, I've seen that there are add-ons. I, I don't really find it so... Actually, I tried to use this add-on that's called the Light Mapper, I think. Yeah, um, that's the one I use. Yeah, it, yeah it, I find it even more complicated than the... the the, the the blender thing well the there's thing no documentation on it so there's no explanation anywhere <laughs> yeah about the light mapper yeah yeah that's also a bit i also like the the bit buggy i think it's not super maintained so yeah i didn't i didn't spend much time honestly because i really need it but what i what i do use a lot is the um, is this add-on the uv pack master 2 that's really mm -hmm. it's really good for for packing um so yeah that's that's the the other that I usually use. I haven't, for, yeah, I've, I mapping. haven't used UV Packmaster, but I've heard that it's very good and a lot of people in the hubs community are using it. So I should probably get on board. Connor, you're, yeah, cur so. currently your documentation on the light mapper is like the go to. <laughs> there's there's <laughs> not much else. I, I yeah. used it a bit when I was trying to figure things out. So thanks for that. No worries. Yeah, no, it was, it was getting under my skin as well that like that that nobody had done anything on it um well enough so i i just took a a couple like a week or two and just figured out the whole thing and and then made a video on it um and well i can share that with you if you're interested yeah sure. um yeah no the the other thing yeah i i just wanted to ask about um you know what you I mean, you, you seem to have a lot of generalist skills, like you, you have a lot of skills in a lot of different areas. And a lot of the, the dialogue that my, many of my students face from education institutions is just telling everybody to specialize the niche to just do one thing really well instead of doing many things really well, um, because it's very difficult to do many things really well. But here I am in your in this scene where things are animated, textures are moving, the lights, the lighting is really nice and has been baked. You've written your own scripts for that. I'm talking to you in an avatar that you built that's animated, that has sprites, that has, you know, all, all these different features. It seems like you have a vast generalist skill. You know, would you be somebody that would uh, argue against specializing or has this generalist, has your generalist career um, held you back in any way or any reason why, you know, you shouldn't generalize as you have? Well, we should do this more often. This is really good for a safe esteem. <laughs> like, <laughs> <really> <laughs> nice. Thanks for yeah. really, um, no, I, I don't know. I mean, um, I guess maybe also a bit of a master of none. I mean, I do like a lot. I don't excel on any, but uh, yeah, I, I, I do things that I, I like. But I guess it's just a matter of I'm curious about certain things, so um, so just like I like it, and I mean, if you like something, you end up you like something enough, that you end up like uh, getting into it and spending time um, working on it. So, um, oh, the generalist or specializing? I don't know. I guess um, I guess for the industry, probably it's better to specialize um, unless you are like extremely a talented. Um, artist or, or or developer and, and then you work on the very specific things um and and, and on everything that which are we here we have like done which basically does like everything on apps like you can do like all sorts of things like from from back to front and from graphics to um everything so it's like um you know but um i i guess that's the ideal case where you can do everything um but um I know whatever works. Uh, I guess whatever works for 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 you, whatever you feel comfortable, or you want to focus and and put effort and time on it. Um, I think that's that's what you should do. Whatever you feel comfortable and and you feel like, um, yeah, you're, you're excelling. If it's in everything because you're super talented, because that's okay. If if you want to focus on some specific thing because you are really into that and and that's what you where you want to spend most of your time um i think that's how it should be you shouldn't so force, that, force yourself into I need, I need to learn everything just because this is how it's supposed to be 
so you you've basically just followed your curiosity and that has led you to this big range of skills mm, yeah yeah just yeah, jumping from thing to thing and after a while then you you, you learn uh, but I say I don't think it works if you force yourself into that right oh now I need to to maybe you are like an artist and say like oh now I need to force myself to to program if you are I mean if you are curious about it then it's going to happen naturally because right or the curiosity is going to take you there at some point if you are curious enough and uh, if you enjoy that um, but otherwise it's going to be like a not a great adventure right so just follow follow your curiosity follow your interests and eventually you'll get where you're going is that the advice yeah yeah that's yeah that's it's, it's an advice but yeah that's, it's, it's, <laughs> yeah any, any um any closing thoughts on on for people that are looking to start building on Mozilla Hubs, or uh, yeah, just just any ideas on on what you think is important for a Mozilla Hubs space, or or why Mozilla Hubs is is should be the the choice. I mean, what I will do is just jump into the communities because um, there's a lot of people that share the knowledge there. Um, and the team is there, like Jim is the whole time, Dom is there, I, I, I try to be there also as much as possible and answer questions. And, and I think if you engage with the community, um, even though you don't have much knowledge, but as I said before, if you, you have curiosity, um, then you have the tools because this is what happened to me with Blender at the time in the past where, where you have that platform that is free and there's a community and there is like uh, there's some development and uh, there is a team behind that care about it and uh, so if you are curious about it just jump in like uh, go to discord um tell us about what you think uh, try to don't, create don't things that alone. if you're having trouble right but don't suffer don't alone right suffer alone. Yeah, yeah. yeah i spent a lot of time in blender like banging my head on a wall and you know for example and then went to the blender one of the blender discords and you know asked a question and two seconds later five people answered me and i was on my way and hubs we try to be the same way as, as much as we can hmm. yeah, well said yeah i mean if you're interested in in these and virtual spaces and and creating virtual worlds then we have a really powerful like tool set like blender and, and hubs that you can do so so if you are really interested, just just jump in and and ask and, and try. And uh, they have a lot of information, and we we are making sure that uh, we we are making even more documentation available, so everybody has access to to resources and 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 they can learn easier and easily. So yeah, I, I mean. It's, like it is, you, you can do it. You have the tools. Fantastic, absolutely. Yeah, I'm. Uh, I'm happy to uh, wrap this up. I want to thank you so much for your time, Manuel. Thank you for making this awesome oh, space. You. I really feel like this should be uh, the 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 default Mozilla Hub space because I feel like if more people entered into Mozilla Hubs and this was the first environment they saw, um, the the idea and the the potential for the platform would be just a lot more, a lot more visible and a lot more clear. Um, and also, I think it's nice to have that as like, you know, as as maybe a, a a first place on the podium that can get knocked down by some other awesome artist that's trying to beat you. Yeah, not a bad idea. Well, happy to see people's creations, and um, I think is is we are getting more. A more like super interesting environments that I've seen like a progression lady. So hopefully that uh, keeps on going the same way. Yeah, I th yeah. Th this this space got me completely fired up. I was like, geez, you know, someone out here doing this kind of stuff like two two weeks. Oh man, I got to get my game on. You know, I got to take this. <laughs> I got to take this stuff to the next level. So. It definitely fired me up. Um, I know it fired up a lot of other artists in the community. So thanks so much. And uh, yeah, yeah, thanks for, for the interview. And thanks everyone else for coming here today. And uh, we're going to wrap this one up.
Thank, Thank you. you.